Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. I'm your host, Joe Bahoda. And today I got another video as we prepare for Resurrection Sunday, as we prepare for, as we celebrate as Christians, the resurrection of Jesus Christ this, um, this Sunday. Um, unfortunately, we have another <laughs> church scandal, if you will, in the sense of Elevation Church uh, here in North Carolina on their Easter flyers as they hand out. Um, their digital director, um, they decided as Elevation Church as to not offend or as to, you know, to get more people as non-church people, as, um, you know, as basically non-Christians or as, they, as she considers outsiders into the church to invite them to church on Easter Sunday as Resurrection Sunday. Um, they have decided not to use the words Calvary, the blood of Jesus, or resurrection at all on their flyers. Um, now, this has caused a big stir because this was actually a part of an interview that she gave um, for, uh, as an organization called Pro Church, um, Pro Church Tools. This was actually an interview, um, and this is, has gone like all throughout, you know, Christian Twitter and Christian YouTube. Uh, and I'm going to show a portion of uh, that uh, this video, and you'll be able to hear it. And I'm going to include the um, portions of the um, interview itself and description of, of my video as well, so you can listen to it and see it as, as, as well. From Corey Miner, Smart Christian Channel, because he's got bits and pieces of the interview as well. And then I'm just going to go ahead and um, and then just give my little two bits here at the end as well. Um, I, I have a problem with that at many different levels. Um, now, in fairness, a lot of people are coming are really hitting them because they're like, well, how dare you not say, you know, no, no blood of Jesus, no Calvary and resurrection. Um, they're saying, well, we're not saying that in the service. We're just saying that we're just not saying that in our flyer. Um, and I, I do think in fairness, that is a, a distinction that needs to be made. Um, cause they're not saying that in the service. We're just saying that not in our flyer. Um, however, though, that is a little misleading, um, and, I, and I'm going to get into that. And um, when I first heard that, that was the, one of the first thoughts that I had as well. So here's the article that I pulled up online. I'm just going to go ahead and read it, and then I'm going to sh show you the video. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and get my two thoughts at the end. So here's the article right here. It says, Stephen Furtick facing backlash because Elevation Church won't use words like resurrection and Easter invites. Now, that's a key that's a key point. Easter invites, not necessarily in the service, but Easter invites, i.e. the flyer. And you know how churches do it when you know, during Christmas or during, particularly Easter and Christmas. And this is a big deal. And I don't have a problem with this because as we know, statistically, church, um, you know, during Christmas and during Easter, they're the two busiest times a year for churches to have. Because usually during Christmas and Easter, statistically, they're the two busiest times where people come to church. Okay. So usually during the, during, you know, during those two times a year, because of that statistically, that those are the two times people come to church the most. This is when churches usually make their Easter flyers or their Christmas flyers, you know, inviting people to church via the flyer, you know, the little pamphlets that they hand out. So in that, in that regard, I don't have a problem for Elevation Church, you know, making flyers and stuff to hand out to people to invite people to come to church because these are the two busiest times statistically a year for them to do that. So I don't have a problem with that. But they, they, they purposely, as a strategy, and don't get it twisted, this is a strategy, they purposely decided to use and take off the blood of Jesus, take off Calvary, and take off the resurrection to so-called get the unchurched or get outsiders to make them feel welcome. My point is, anybody's welcome anybody. Anybody's welcome to come, even with those words on the pamphlet. Okay, but anyway, so it's a really bad marketing strategy to begin with. But anyway, so here's the article. Elevation Church and Pastor Stephen Furtick are facing controversy after a recent interview with a senior staff member re revealed the church doesn't use words like resurrection, Calvary, or the blood of Jesus in their Easter invitations. Nikki Shear, uh, Elevation Church's digital content director, recently spoke with Pro Church Tools about the way that the church uses social media to draw and engage with new and familiar audiences. During part of the interview, Shear explained that the church avoids using language that immediately makes someone feel as an outsider, particularly for an event like Easter Sunday. Now, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that here in a little bit, too, the outsider thing. When I think about how I'm going to talk about Easter, I'm thinking about how I'm going to 
to talk to people far from God because that's the thing that matters most to us, Shear said. This is all about getting people into the seats, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and talk about that too because Jesus wasn't worried about that. Many times in the Gospels, he would say, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Meaning, if you have an ear, come unto me. If you don't, get to stepping. Not everybody that Jesus talked to liked what he had to say. And those who didn't, they got to stepping. Okay, there's a lot of people that walked away from Jesus. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Meaning, if you don't have an ear, keep walking. Okay, Jesus didn't have a problem with that. I don't know why we in churches are so afraid that people... Now, we want to have people get saved. We want to have people to hear the gospel message. But not everybody has an ear to hear. And those who don't walk away. And Jesus didn't have a problem with that. So I don't know why we have a problem with that. But anyway, for us, the most important thing on Easter is, is inviting people to church. Honestly, it should be having them hear the gospel message and them getting saved. Which, by the way, they don't need to go to church to do that. They should hear the gospel, and they could hear the gospel via you in the street corner for all that, all, 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 all that matters. See, they don't need to go to church to hear the gospel. They should hear the gospel through you. And they can hear the gospel anywhere that where you are. See, the church isn't the, the idea. The idea is where you are because you are the church. See, so I disagree with their model here. The, the, the importance is the gospel. And the gospel is presented through you, not the church building. See, so their model is wrong. See, they get saved through the gospel. They don't get saved through the building. So she says here, for us, the most important thing on Easter is inviting people to church. No, the most important thing on Easter is the resurrection, which is the gospel message. Not them coming to church. Now, ideally, if they come to church, they're supposed to hear the gospel message, which should be the resurrection. But they can hear the resurrection through the gospel message anytime they come in contact with a member of the body of Christ, who is the church. See, so they got this whole thing backwards anyway. But I digress. This means reaching people far from God. Well, how are you going to reach them? Through the resurrection, through the blood of Jesus, and through Calvary. So you shouldn't admit it. So you shouldn't omit it. Come on now. So we're not going to use the words Calvary, resurrection, or the phrase blood of Jesus. But you can't reach them without those things. Those are the things that help. That's, that's, that, that's the, the core of the gospel. Without those, without those things, you don't have a gospel. So therefore, you can't reach them. You can't get them saved without those things. So literally, you're, you're cutting off the nose to spite your face. We don't use language that will immediately make someone feel like an outsider. Sears' comments went viral, with many users across X, Instagram, which is Twitter, Instagram and TikTok calling out the church for watering down Christianity, which is true. There ain't no Jesus without the resurrection and his blood he shed on Calvary, wrote one Instagram user. Such blasphemy. Watering down the word now of non-believers does nothing for anyone. Makes them lukewarm, repent, all exclamations. Another user wrote, if it's true that your church is taking away life-changing scriptures, then who are, who are you people? How is it there is a church without these important scriptures? This is pretty anti-Christ move. Can't wait to hear you all explain, which apparently I don't know if Elevation Church has come out with an explanation yet. I don't think they have. Elevation has not responded to the controversy although pro-church tools has attempted to come to the church's defense in a blog post, clarifying that Elevation Church doesn't use this language in invitations only, meaning apparently they do use it in the church services, but only in the invitations that they don't. Okay. Importantly, Elevation absolutely emphasizes the resurrection of Christ in an Easter service and uses that word, pro-choice tool stated, yet you won't find it on an Easter invitation of theirs. So again, they use it in the service, but not in the invitations. However, users have pointed out that not wanting to use theological language for, for fear of ostracizing someone is still misleading at best and blasphemous at worst. Amen. I want to talk about that misleading part because I agree. That's a classic bait and switch. Because essentially what you're saying is, you're saying, hey, I'm not going to use Calvary. I'm not going to use the blood of Jesus. I'm not going to use resurrection because I'm afraid of offending you, or I'm afraid of you're, you're an unchurched person, you are, you're an outsider, so I'm basically going to use a bait to hook you with using non-offensive language. But then when you come in, then you're going to hear Calvary, supposedly. Because again, if, you, if you've been following Stephen Furtick, he doesn't really preach the gospel. He, he, 
he preaches self-help, you know, word of faith, you know, you know, one message, he, one time he says, I'm, you know, I am God Almighty. So he's borderline, we are God's word of faith, prosperity gospel stuff, okay? So it's very much, instead of a God-centered message, it's a very, you know, human-centered message. So it's not a very good gospel presentation. It's very, very bad messages. It's, it's a very, very bad gospel presentation, if it's a gospel presentation at all. Listen to Stephen Furtick, man. It's a very human-centered message message. It's a very human-centered gospel. It's a very self human flated gospel, okay? Um, so who knows if you're going to hear the words Calvary, um, the, the cross, resurrection, the blood of Jesus. Who knows if you're going to hear any of those words? But let's just say if you do, and I'll be honest with you, I really don't want to listen to his sermon on Sunday to, to see if he says it or not. I mean, who wants to listen to Stephen Furtick this Sunday? I know I don't. But let's just say, if he, let's just say he uses those phrases. That's a classic bait and switch. It, it is misleading because you're saying, hey, I'm going to use non-offensive language to bait you in. But then when I get you, I'm going to offend you once I get you. So you're being disingenuous because you're saying, hey, I'm going to be non-offensive to get you. But then when I get you, when I get you, when I get your butt in the seat, I'm going to do whatever I want once I get you in here. Well, that's classic bait and switch because I'm going to bait you in with one thing, but but then when I get you in, I'm going to sw I'm going to do the switcheroo on you. I'm going to change it up on you once I get you in here. It's classic bait and switch marketing, guys. If that's indeed what what they're doing, so it is misleading. It is disingenuous. If indeed that's what they're doing, I it's a lie. Well, the Bible says, "Let your yes be yes and your no mean no." I you know. Let, Say what you're going to say and mean what you're going to mean and do what you're going to do. As Christians, we should be straight up about this. Don't do the bait and switch on people. If you're going to say Calvary, if you're going to say the blood of Jesus, and you're going to say resurrection in the service, then your flyer should be reflecting that. If this is what you're going to talk about, and this is what you're going to do in the Sunday service on Resurrection Sunday, then your flyer should be reflecting what the Sunday service should be about. Don't do bait and switch on people. If you're going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus, then your flyer should be talking about and reflecting the resurrection of Jesus. Don't be misleading and don't, and, don't, and don't do the bait and switch on people. Let your flyer reflect what you're going to be talking about. That's this ethics. That's this integrity, ladies and gentlemen. So it is misleading and it is bait and switch strategy. It's just, it's lying. It's, 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 it's disingenuous. So at the very least, they're wrong for being disingenuous. But they're also wrong for being cowardly and not reflecting 1 Corinthians 15 and also Roman and John chapter 6, which I'll get into. But, but let's listen to the video real quick. And then you're going you're gonna to have Corey's comments real quick. But, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed up the video real quick, just, just so you can listen to, to Nikki Shear real quick. Here you go. This is just a snippet of her interview. And so how do I talk to those two people are really different. Um, but I'm putting a lot of my focus energy, time, resources toward what I would call the cold audience as people far from God. And so I'm not going to say the word Calvary. I'm not going to say the word resurrection. I'm not going to say the blood of Jesus, uh, right? I'm, I'm not going to say any of these words that make someone feel like an outsider. Okay, hold on. I'm not going to use these words that would make someone feel like an outsider. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. But if that doesn't grab you, if that doesn't jolt you, if that doesn't make you just do a double take, because it should. This is really important. Um, a, a, an important guiding principle for how we develop language is um, anyone can be a part of our church. It might not be for everyone. Everyone might not like it, but anyone can come. Um, you don't have to understand what we're, you know, any fancy language. There's not any prerequisite to be able to come here. And so, so when we're thinking about such a like steeped in tradition holiday like Easter, and how we talk to someone who is not steeped in that tradition, and how we get them to connect to it and come to it, that's really important to us. So let's think about Okay, a couple of things there. She's like, okay, again, I understand, you know, Easter and Christmas are the two most, two biggest holidays people come to when they come to church. I get that during the year. But she's like, the reason we're doing this is because to reach the outsiders, I get it. But then she's like, well, because I want, I want anybody to feel that they're welcome here. Anybody can come here. Again, like I said earlier, anybody can come to church during Resurrection Sunday anyway. I don't need to change the language of a flyer. Anybody's welcome to come. Again, like Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. That's another way of saying anybody's free to come. But if you don't want to hear it, 
get to stepping. Anybody is welcome. But if it offends you, you can leave. Okay? But anybody is welcome at this table. If you want to come, you can come. But I'm not going to change my message just because it offends you. Great example of this. And Jesus did this. And Jesus is our example. So if you got a problem with this, you, you got a problem with Jesus. And he's our example. So let's take Jesus' lead on this. And in, and in his video, and I'm gonna, again, I'm going to include Corey's video on this. And Corey points this out in his video, later on in his video. John chapter 6. Remember, Jesus was talking about you know, him dying on the cross. And he was talking about you know, his body being broken and his blood being shed. And in John 6, Jesus said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part of me. And the people said, this is a very hard saying, you know, basically who can do it or who can know it? And the Bible says, and people were extremely offended at this. And it says, and many people left him on that day. So because they got offended at what Jesus was saying, they left him. Many people left him. And the Bible doesn't say that Jesus was like, oh, he was so distraught. And he said, oh, come on back. Please come back. Please come back. Oh, you know, you don't, you misunderstood me. You don't understand what I was saying. You know, please come back. Please come back. No. They left him and Jesus was good with that. Saints, we got to be good with that too. What did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, look, the world hated me. Therefore, the world will hate you. Now, this is not a license for us to be mean to people and we should hate the world. No, we're commanded to walk in love regardless. We have to love the world. We have to, as far as, not love the world as far as we want to sin, but love the world as far as we love the people. We have to walk in love. That's what I mean by love the world. We have to walk in love. We have to have love towards the world. That's what I mean, okay? We have to love them. We have to love them, okay? We have to walk in love regardless. No matter how they treat us, we have to walk in love. Period. We have to walk in love. We have to show love, talk in love, show love. We have to walk in love, period. Okay? However, if they don't like our message, if we don't, if they don't like what we have to say and they leave us and they get to step in and they have a hostile attitude and they get to step in, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Meaning if they don't have ears and they don't like it and they get to step in, just like, just like the Bible told the disciples, dust off the dust off your feet and keep it moving. And they keep it moving and that's it. And they leave your company and that's it. Not everybody is going to receive the gospel message. And some people are going to hear the gospel message maybe later on in life. And some people don't ever hear it. And that's just the way it is. Some people will be offended and some people will leave. Just like they got offended and they left Jesus. Think about it. There were some people that were literally in the presence of God. They were in the presence of Jesus. They got offended in Jesus' presence. And they never got saved ever. And they were literally standing in the presence of Jesus. And they never got saved. Because they got offended. And they were literally standing in front of Jesus. And they never got saved. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. They were literally sitting in the presence of Jesus and they got offended at Jesus and they left and Jesus was okay with it. We got to be okay with it too. Amen. But let's go further. And Corey points this out too. And I'm going to point this out too, but I'm going to go a little bit further with it. First Corinthians 15, talking about the resurrection of Christ. First Corinthians 15, starting at verse 12. Paul's talking about the importance of the resurrection here. But if it is preached that Christ had not been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. The King James says, if Jesus has not been raised from the dead, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in, basically your faith is in vain. Our preaching in, is in vain and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses. Basically, we are liars about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. So if Christ has not been raised, 
your atonement for sin didn't happen either. Therefore, if, you're, if, you're, if, if your sins aren't forgiven, you're not saved. You're, you don't even have assurance of salvation, which means you're not even Christians. Christianity is a sham. Let's just close, close all the doors and our faith is, Christianity doesn't even exist. And we're, we're still going to die and go to hell because we still, we're still dead in our sins if Christ wasn't raised. Then those who also who have fallen asleep, i.e. died in Christ, are also lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all, all people most to be pitied. Paul is saying if Jesus did not rise from the dead, if the resurrection of Christ didn't happen, then we are still dead in our sins. We're not even saved. Christianity is a sham. Our faith is futile. Paul and the apostles are nothing but a bunch of hypocritical, disingenuous liars. Pack this whole thing up and let's all go home because it's all a sham. It's all a lie. We're all dead in our sins. Christianity, the religion of Christianity is all a sham. Some Christians say it's not a religion, it's a relationship. Well, guess what? That's a lie too. There is no relationship. It's all a lie. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, it's all a lie. Pack it up. Let's go home. We're all dead in our sins. It's all over. Now, what's my point to all that? An Elevation Church needs to take a clue. If the resurrection of Christ didn't happen, Elevation Church doesn't exist. This is how, this is how important this is. See, because this is beyond, again, remember I said this is, this is a... This is a marketing, this is a outreach strategy. But this is a huge, what I call seeker-sensitive outreach strategy. But this is, this is seeker-sensitive on crack. This is beyond seeker-sensitive. This is stupidity. This is stupidity. This is cut off your nose to spite your face. This is beyond seeker-sensitive. This is dumb. This is ignorance. This is, this is dumb. Because what you've just done, you've now cut off your reason for even existing. Without the resurrection, there is no elevation church. Without the resurrection, without the blood of Jesus, without Calvary, elevation church doesn't exist. Without the resurrection, you have no flyer to hand out. Without the resurrection... There's nothing to be inviting people to. Think about it. Without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what do you, Elevation Church, number one, you don't have a church. There is no Elevation Church. Without the resurrection, Elevation, you don't exist. But number two, without the resurrection of Jesus, what event are you inviting them to? What are you celebrating? Without the resurrection, Elevation Church, number one, you, you can't make a flyer because there's nothing to come to, but which is my point. What are you inviting them to? Because without the resurrection, nothing happened. You have no church. You have no flyer. There's nothing to be inviting them to. So why don't you put it on the flyer? Because without it, what, what are you inviting them to come to? Come to church. Without the resurrection, you have no church. You just said... The most important thing is for them to come to church on Easter. Without the resurrection, there is no church. There is no flyer. There is no event. Without the resurrection, you don't have any of those things, Elevation. This is cutting off your nose to spite your face. So this is beyond seeker-sensitive. This is stupid. This is stupidity one-on-one. So Elevation Church, can you really be this stupid? Yes, you can. Unfortunately, yes, you can. Because I've learned in life, human stupidity knows no bounds. Yes, we really can be this stupid. Without the resurrection, Elevation Church doesn't exist. Therefore, you have no flyer to hand out because there's no event to come to. There's no, there's no event to be invited to. So this is beyond seeker sensitive. This is just plain old human stupidity on steroids. So this is a huge hashtag fail. 
And again, even if you put Calvary, Blood of Jesus, Resurrection on the flyer, people are still welcome to come. They're welcome to come with those words on it. Well, it's going to offend them. Guess what? He who have, he who have an ear to hear, let him hear. Jesus was okay with that. Why aren't you? Why aren't you? And again, personally, I would like to know what Stephen Furtick is going to preach if he's going to use Calvary, blood of Jesus, and resurrection on Sunday. I'm not going to listen because I don't want to be bothered. Quite frankly, I don't want to be bothered. But I'd like to know. And if he does, it's a bait and switch. And if he doesn't, here's the other problem. If he doesn't, then there's no gospel at all. If he doesn't, then there's no God. You have no gospel on your flyer and you have no gospel in the service. Well, if that's the case, then, then you better pack this whole thing up and go home and Stephen Furtick resign, shut this whole thing down because you don't even have a church. What you have is basically just a social club for sinners and they just want to feel good about themselves. So please go ahead and close the doors, pack this whole thing up and just go home and shut this whole doggone thing down because you're wasting your time anyway, which is essentially where this whole thing is going. So the, Stephen Furtick resign. Close the doors, shut this whole thing down because you don't have a church. You just have a social club for sinners because they just want to feel good about themselves. And you, quite frankly, you just want to make money. You just want to get a whole bunch of you know butts in the seats because you just want to make money. So shut the whole thing down anyway and close the doors. So if, if he doesn't, if he doesn't say Calvary, blood of Jesus, or resurrection, shut the whole thing down. Close the doors because you're just in it for the money anyway. So shut it down. Now, the reason for me personally, this is a big deal because I live in Wake Forest, North Carolina, which is about, you know, 30 minutes from downtown Raleigh. Well, Elevation Church is in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is like three hours from here. But they have numerous branch campuses throughout North Carolina. So there's a huge Elevation Church footprint throughout North Carolina here. Well, they have a Elevation Church in Raleigh, not in downtown Raleigh, but in the outskirts of Raleigh here. Um, so Elevation Church Raleigh is like 10, 15 minutes from my house. Um, so it's literally like, you know, in my, in my backyard, if you will. So there's many branch campuses of Elevation Church throughout North Carolina. And like I said, the, the main church is in Charlotte. Um, so Elevation Church has a huge footprint here in North Carolina. Um, so this is a lot here in my backyard, if you will. This is, this is big where I'm at. Um, but yeah, if he doesn't say this, this Sunday, man, shut it down. Well, he probably should shut it down anyway, cause that's, that's where he's going. He's, he's getting into the Kenneth Copeland vein of, yeah, T.D. Jake's. He goes, and I said this before, T.D. Jakes is a spiritual father and he needs to be shutting it down anyway, but this is where it's going. This is where it's going. So if he doesn't save Calvary, blood of Jesus or resurrection on resurrection Sunday, shut it down. You're a social club just trying to make money. Shut it down, close the doors and resign because that's, that's where you're going anyway. You're just in it for the money. So, yeah, that, that's where it is, man. That's where it is. And again, it's, you know, to the quote the article, misleading. And I'm going to include the, the link for the article, too, so you can read it. That's classic bait and switch. Bait and switch. Because you're saying we're not going to offend you. But if he does do it, then he's using it in the service, which is, which is misleading, disingenuous marketing. But then again, if he doesn't do it, then it's not disingenuous and he really is watering down the gospel. It is blasphemous because again, without those things, you're not giving him the gospel. See, I can't even say you're watering down the gospel. You're not even giving him the gospel at all. I can't even say you're watering down Christianity because you're not giving him Christianity. You're giving him self-help, preach me happy, make me feel good about myself. Again, it's a social club for sinners, but it's not Christianity. Because again, without Calvary, without the blood of Jesus, and without the resurrection, again, 1 Corinthians 15, our faith is in vain, and everything we preach is in vain, and we, the apostles, are a bunch of liars. So you have to have all those things for it to be the gospel. So if you don't have those things, it's no longer the gospel. 
So if Stephen Furtick doesn't preach those things this Sunday, he didn't preach the gospel. They didn't have a Resurrection Sunday message. They didn't, they didn't, have, they didn't celebrate Resurrection Sunday, and therefore it was a sham. Total, complete sham. So that's that. So Elevation Church, they're in a lot of hot water right now, and for good reason. For good reason. Um, they've been in hot water for a while now. And for good reason, because they keep doing stupid stuff like this. For good reason. And I've been saying for a long time, Stephen Furtick and Elevation Church, mark and avoid. Mark and avoid. Mark and avoid. Now you know why. Now you know why. Anyway, if you like this, hit the like button, hit the share button, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, know that I love you, and God does too. God bless everybody.